everybody, Alex, healthhacksreviewed.com. So in this video, I'm actually gonna talk about heat lamps once again. If you didn't see my other video when I was talking and measuring the therapeutic efficacy, check that one out. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna point out two common heat lamp type of technologies that you'll see in some saunas. Uh, so one is the classic 250 watt bulb heat lamp. You may have seen these warming up food at your local buffet. Um, and these are some of the common brands of heat lamps. You can get these from Home Depot or on the internet. Um, and they do make their way into some saunas. Um, and then we'll also have here is a halogen tube light. Inside we have a tungsten filament or element. Um, that's what actually heats up. And so this one you'll see, if you see saunas or heat lamps that uh, are like rectangular in a sauna, um, that's mainly uh, what is in there. And this has some similar properties in, in that both of these to produce infrared and heat, uh, they both have to get pretty hot. Um, I would say that this, both of these would be somewhere around a thousand plus. Uh, this one probably gets just slightly hotter um, than these heat lamps. And so one important thing to note about that, if you're seeing one of those in a sauna, is that's the reason why these lamps are a little bit further away from your body. Um, because if you look up the manufacturer's uh, own studies that were done with these many, many years ago, decades, uh, they learned very quickly that if you have these too close to a body, uh, and I would say maybe under two feet, you can, you can run the risk of basically skin damage. While they do penetrate more deeply, they're more transmissive is the term, um, that actually is not necessarily ideal in that it can damage deeper layers of the body. So that's why generally they're at a, a safer proximity if you do see them in saunas. But therein lies kind of a disadvantage therapeutically um, because they do have to be further away from the body um, if you saw in my other video where I was actually measuring uh, with this beam meter um, that basically at the normal distance, let's say this distance here, in some cases further in a sauna, you're getting extremely low amounts of near infrared. And the way we measure that, remember from the meter and how they do it in the industry, they basically laid out all the clinical research for near infrared is they measure that in milliwatts per centimeter squared. And at a distance of around a couple feet, we're getting somewhere around 15 milliwatts, which was actually substantially less than even the minimum therapeutic requirements that we saw in studies. And those are known as like dosage protocols. So at this distance, not that therapeutic. Um, these also, these types of square sort of heat lamps also need to be a distance from the body as well. Um, so again, can you get any closer to increase the therapeutic efficacy? Not recommended again, because then you run the risk of skin damage um, and or other issues uh, to possibly your core organs. So you wanna keep a safe distance, um, but again, you're gonna start to get very minimum milliwatts per centimeter squared. So these lamps have to get very hot to the point where a lot of their energy is actually just going into warming the air. So they actually start to get very similar to the properties of radiant heaters, which we might see in traditional saunas, traditional finished saunas. Um, so in terms of emissivity, next time you're evaluating these with a company or for a possible therapeutic protocol, what you really want to look for is what is the emissivity of these kind of elements or emitters. Remember, on the sauna industry, they talk, all these different companies talk all day long about emissivity when it comes to carbon elements as well as ceramics. It's an important thing to look at. But what's the emissivity of these? That's something that you don't see too often. It has to get to a very high surface temperature. It's a distance from your body. So really your ability to actually absorb any significant amount of energy, joules of near infrared, um, is very low. So. I'm not really a fan of this method particularly. What's usually just a lot easier to absorb and convert the energy in the body are basically elements that can be much closer to the body, um, anywhere from a few inches. So both ceramics and carbons are excellent for that. 
You can basically be just a few inches away from the body, even on right on top of the body, and it's safe, and uh, the emissivity is high, and you can absorb a lot of infrared that way. So if you are interested still about near infrared, let's just go back to the elements that they used in all the studies over the last 20 years, which is LEDs or lasers. You're not going to see any lasers in saunas, but you will see some LEDs out there. And if you ever have any questions on what are some powerful arrays or emitters that do LED properly in a sauna, uh, just reach out to me on my website, healthhacksreview.com. And you can also inquire with me under on the YouTube channel. But feel free to reach out if you have any more questions. And if you found this video helpful, please like it. Thank you for watching.